sex usually is like funny to me if it's not <laughs> if it's not scary and painful. <laughs> me too, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I know my personality tends to have like low self-confidence, so I depend upon other people for self-worth. So knowing that about myself, I want to reach a stage in my life where I can build my own self-confidence without depending upon another person. I think I'm single because I'm very picky. And picky is in uh, I'm terrified. <laughs> so I just normally say no to everyone because I just get really scared of getting really extremely close to people. So I think it's just me being like, ah. Some people, they like the smell of coffee, but don't like drinking it. So it's like being attracted to someone romantically, but not necessarily wanting to have sex with them. When people find out that I'm asexual, they usually either don't know what it means or they're like, nah, or they try to prove me wrong. <laughs> When I really, really connect with someone, there's really nothing else I, I focus on. I identify as a non-binary woman, and usually people look at me and say, oh, you're really feminine, and so you can't be non-binary. People really don't expect that <laughs> when I tell them. They're kind of, oh. <laughs> your name is Natalie, and this is your story. You are 24 years old, for work, you are a fashion designer. <laughs> um, you grew up in Illinois. Your family heritage is Korean. Your astrological sign is a Libra. And your height is 5'5". Five five. My name is Heather. <laughs> I am 24 years old. <laughs> For work, I am an actor and a ghostwriter. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in San Jose, uh, California. My family heritage is Vietnamese, but I get Korean quite often. <laughs> I am an Aries, and I'm five foot six. Oh, super close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Your name is Lavender, <laughs> <laughs> and this is your story. Um, you're 25 years old. For work, you are a fashion student. <laughs> um, you grew up in Seattle. Your family heritage is British American. Your astrological sign is Pisces, and you are five foot nine. Oh, uh, <laughs> very close. Cool. <laughs> my name is Bethany, and this is my story. I am 23 years old. I am a writer, and I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I wish I grew up in Seattle, though. <laughs> Seattle's cool. Um, my family heritage is European, and my astrological sign is a Cancer, so water sign close. And my height is 5'9". Hey! Hey! <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. I loved lavender. Yes. <laughs> that's my favorite scent, so oh. that's kind of close. Hey! <laughs> cool. When we had our eyes closed, <laughs> say lavender. that I smelled lavender from <laughs> You said Natalie. Yeah, I said That's Natalie. Cool. I don't know, it was, like, it was like the first name that popped into my head, so yeah. Cool. You're a ghostwriter? I am. That's so cool. Explain that a little bit to me. So, so. there's like a best-selling author who hires other people to write their books. So I'm one of those people. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is cool. It almost sounds like a superhero name, like Ghost Rider. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> there is a superhero called Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider, yeah. But when I said that, it kind of like clicked in my head. <laughs> I mean, there's possibly, there's a superhero also called Ghost Rider, or is a Ghost Rider, but also <laughs> writes ghosts into existence. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm a writer as well. What types of like stories or articles or what do you write? I do like uh, mostly for TV or like web series and stuff like that and like cool. short films. But my favorite genres are like fantasy and comedy and that's what I go for, yeah. I like sci-fi. <laughs> oh, I love sci-fi. There's so many possibilities. Oh, definitely. It's just hard to condense down. Yeah, I took a class on sci-fi and they said like the definition of sci-fi itself isn't something that people completely agree upon either. So definitely worlds of possibilities. Oh yeah. 
That's crazy. I once uh, heard someone describe science fiction as the art of the possible. And I yeah. love that definition. <laughs> it's, so, it's so haunting. Would fantasy be the art of the impossible then? Or? It might be. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. You are most likely to cosplay as Princess Bubblegum. <laughs> um, you think the new Star Wars movies are the best yet. Your Patronus is a seahorse. In Game of Thrones, you would be part of House, this is the only one I knew. Targaryen, <laughs> the one with the dragons. Uh, you would want Amelia Clark to play you in a movie about your life. And the greatest story ever told was Lord of the Rings. You do regularly play Dungeons and Dragons. I am most likely to cosplay as Luna Lovegood. I have many names. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think the new Star Wars movies are the best yet. My Patronus is a phoenix. In Game of Thrones, uh, my house would be Targaryen. <laughs> <laughs> and I would want my cat to play me in a movie about my life. And the greatest story ever told was Avatar The Last Airbender. Nice. And I do regularly play Dungeons and Dragons. Hey. <laughs> hey. Cool. You are most likely to cosplay as Raven from Teen Titans. <laughs> you think the new Star Wars movies are okay. Your Patronus is a stag, but now I would actually say seahorse. <laughs> <laughs> In Game of Thrones, your house would be Stark and you would want yourself to play you in a movie about your life. <laughs> and the greatest story ever told was Harry Potter. And you do regularly play Dungeons and Dragons. Cool. I would most likely cosplay to be as Gemma Simmons from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, I do think the new Star Wars movies are okay. <laughs> um, uh, my Patronus is a stoat. <laughs> Do you know what a stoat is? No. <laughs> it's like a little ferret creature that like hypnotized rabbits by dancing like erratically and then <laughs> they eat the rabbits. That's... <laughs> anyway, um, in Games of Thrones, um, so I was thinking House of Stark, but couldn't remember the name. So I went with the one I gave you. So technically you're right. And my instinctive answer for the person I would play me in the movie would be me. But then I was like, maybe I'll be too biased. I wrote Kelly Marie Tran, um, who was in the recent Star Wars movie. Ah, oh, love her. Yes, she's amazing. <laughs> um, the greatest story ever told, I put Howl's Moving Castle. Because <laughs> I like it. And I was love like, it. what's the most recent book I've read? And I do not regularly play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, that's okay. I would love to learn though, because I'm like, I hear about it, but I don't. Oh, honestly, it's so easy. Okay, like, cool. Yeah, I can. I consider it really easy. Yeah, I've been playing for a while, but like, um, yeah, honestly, like my friends have picked up on it so fast, it's crazy. Okay, I'm cool. I'm basically just like, you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll give you snacks, you play Dungeons and Dragons. Win-win. So, yeah. Nice. But Wh Why did you say Stark? I don't know very much Stark? about Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, well, you just seem very like, just super grounded. You know what you like, you know your strengths. Like that's just kind of the vibe I got. So oh, cool. in Stark, people are just like so cool. They're just like such badasses and they're just like take no prisoners kind of people. So <laughs> cool. yeah. Whoa. I, I haven't watched a lot of, like I know, oh, there's dragons, that's cool. <laughs> I love dragons, so like, I've always been like a house Targaryen. I had a Targaryen banner and then this season surprised me a little bit. Mm. But yeah, I still like, I still connect with house Targaryen. I do love them. Cool. Yeah. So I noticed that you like Avatar Less Airbender. I really do, yeah. I love Avatar Less Airbender. I have to like rewatch oh, it. God. Oh, me every summer. Um, <laughs> every June is my Avatar month. Um, Why June? Yeah, a Pride month, Avatar oh, month, I'm sweet. just like, yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm just obsessed with the universe. Like, um, I read all the comic books. I've like, uh, do, I just like figure out new things, come up with my new own theories. I just, it's just like one of those stories that's always really stuck with me and mm -hmm. that I just always love so much. So yeah, I just, I really love it. Cool. Yeah, for some reason, I got a vibe that you were just like, oh, okay, uh, you think the new Star Wars movies are okay? <laughs> I just have fun with every Star Wars movie. Like, I grew up watching the previous Star Wars films, but I don't quite remember all the details, like the main <laughs> things. Um, and then I remember liking the more, like, ethnically diverse characters in the recent Star Wars films, but then not really digging the CGI spectacle because it oh, yeah. takes me away from, like, the relationships. So that's why I think it's, like, okay, because I'm like, 
teetering on like parts I like, parts not so much. I don't know. I, I've had fun with the prequels. I have fun with these. I just have fun with all of them. It's crazy. <laughs> and my first tattoo was actually a Star Wars tattoo. Like, right? Ah, cool. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. It's kind of hard to show people because I'm just like, yeah, I always forget it's there too. When you're standing in line, this so one might see it. Oh, yeah, honestly, at Starbucks all the time. Cool. <laughs> We're just like, I love your Rebel Alliance. Um, <laughs> thanks. <laughs>
aura. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I also am attracted to people through just like romantic attraction, like personalities or like aesthetically. Sex usually is like funny to me if it's not <laughs> if it's not scary and painful. <laughs> me too, dude. <laughs> cool. A. A. <laughs> Uh, you said like you would consider an open relationship. Have you had an open relationship before? No. So it's like something that I'm having experience. I'm like, well, it's a possibility. So I'm just like open to it because I think so. <laughs> but how about you? Do you know more about like how yeah. you had? I mean, I've never had like an official open relationship. Like this is an open relationship. But I definitely like having um, <laughs> multiple people that I just like hang out with, I guess. It was wonderful. I also love monogamy. Like it usually just depends on the person and like the type of relationship I have with that person. Do you date guys and girls or? I, um, so I identify as just like fluid with my sexuality. I just say fluid cause it's just easier for me to understand my own mind. <laughs> yeah, I date uh, guys, girls, really any, any gender, like non-binary. Um, for me, it's mostly about like connection and that's really like where my, strongest relationships and long lasting relationships have happened. Mostly, first of all, like friendship and gender just doesn't really like matter to me at all. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Gender doesn't matter to me in terms of like romantic attraction. So, hey. hey. <laughs> you do believe in God. In your family growing up, religion was Catholic. You are a Christian. Your current relationship with God slash creator is good. Um, you do believe in an afterlife. You do believe in the power of prayer. <laughs> you do have a meditation practice. Uh, you would describe the creator as loving. Okay, cool, cool. The truth. I do believe in God. In my family growing up, religion was like the most important thing. I just felt like oh. whether it was important or not. <laughs> uh, I am, I consider myself spiritual, but I actually go to church every Sunday. Um, yeah, it's a source of comfort for me. Uh, my current relationship with God is, he's cool, yeah. <laughs> um, I do believe in an afterlife. I do believe in the power of prayer. I was also teetering a little bit on that one. I do have a meditation practice, and I would describe the creator as a cool dude. <laughs> Noise. <laughs> cool. You do believe in God. And your family growing up, religion was important. You are agnostic. Your current relationship with God slash creator is, <laughs> but the same thing, he's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you do believe in an afterlife. You do not believe in the power of prayer. You do have a meditation practice and you would describe the creator as a homie. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I had a lot of little circling the slashes. So <laughs> for the first one, I like circled slash about believe in God, dude. Uh, yeah, that's all I <laughs> um, uh, My family growing up, religion was, so I answered the different way, which was agnostic, then became Christian, then back to agnostic. <laughs> so I am an agnostic now. There's like, we gotta get out. You know, a whole family, we like shifted together. Um, my current relationship with God slash creator is scared. <laughs> um, we can go more into that later. Um, I do not believe in an afterlife. Um, I do believe in the power of prayer, but I do not have a meditation practice. And then I would describe the creator as scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I like homie better as a, as a description. Oh my gosh, here am I just like, uh, I'm just like, yeah, he's a cool dude. And you're just like, he's scary. He's scary. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to hear about this like agnostic to Christian to back to agnostic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my mom became Christian in college, but my dad was agnostic. So he raised my brother and I as agnostic. And then condensing long story as a family, we gradually became all Christian for a period of time. And then I went to college in which I was part of this fellowship that like was cool. And then they like fired all the staff members that supported queer students. And I was like, oh, no. that's not. And then things started 
getting really bad and it got became scary. And then I was like, I am back agnostic. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. It's so horrible. It was like kind of like a second family because they were like, oh, we're like, I don't know, being fully loved by someone. And like that's where I kind of got my definition of God, like during those first two years, which I think made it so much harder afterward when they were like, well, you identify as LGBTQIA, which God doesn't love. It was a lot of feeling completely loved and then being completely rejected by the same people. And then when like seeing people around me being hurt and for me trying to defend them and speak out about it, being like shut down. So is this what God is like? Does that make sense? Like it oh, was yeah. it was shifting no, my totally. idea of like who God was. And then because it was so hurtful to like people I cared about and to myself, then it's like, oh, it conflated God being equal to hurt and like harmful. So I think that's something that I carried afterward because now I'm like, oh, scared of God because that's what God represents to me. Still open, but also still like licking my wounds. <laughs> yeah. No, I got you completely. It's really interesting because like I was a PK, pastor's <laughs> kid. So church was life. I had like a really great community. And although the beliefs weren't what I believe in and morality, it wasn't what I believed in. I look back at that group and I'm just like, I had a really, really great source of like comfort. But when I came out, I thought, oh, I have to ditch all of my spiritual beliefs. And then I've been more recently, like in the past year, like coming back to it. Because it's nice to know that like you can believe in Jesus and like God, but you can also be queer. I like didn't know it could coexist, but then I, but then I was like, oh my God, you can't, it, like yeah. it can. Like, yeah, basically everything Jesus said like completely supports the queer community. I still like the idea of like God being somewhere in the Bible. It says God is love. And if love is like including everyone, then like loving queer people is part of that. But yeah, it's so a part of that. Bethany. When I first saw you, I said I would date you. <laughs> okay. Hmm. And now that I've gotten to know you, I would still date you. So, Heather. <laughs> when I first saw you, I said that I would date you. Yay! And now that I've gotten to know you, I still would date you. Hey! <laughs> <Smell me. laughs> yeah. Cool. A little personal touch. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Why did you say yes? Why did you say yes? <laughs> um, I think we just vibed really well. Yeah. Got it. And I was like, hey, we like connected all these different levels. And there are many points in time where it's like, oh, these are like conversations we can just like continue on and on outside of the capacity. So I thought that was awesome. Yeah, when I saw you, I was just like, oh, I got a good feeling. I got a real good feeling. Cool. Yeah, I get like feelings. <laughs> That's fair. That's yeah, valid. just like, um, and yeah, it was just like, oh yeah, you seem really cool. Just like right off the bat. Cool. Just like, your aura, like I was talking about. Is it pink? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so pink. <laughs> cool. Do oh, we take okay. the Ikea chairs with us? Because they're really cool. Oh, please. I need some new chairs. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> I was like really nervous at first, but yeah, you're just like a really cool person. So the conversation got like really easy. Yeah. I like was really excited for the rest of the interview when you said, your name is Lavender. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, this is gonna be fun. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for watching Tell My Story. And thank you so much for sending the great questions. If you want to see more, subscribe to Soul Pancake. <laughs>